Welcome and happy spring. It's time for Explore Classroom. My name is Jennifer Bergen and I am so glad that you are here with us today. March is Women's History Month and we hope that all of our viewers are taking time to learn about the amazing contributions of women in all of our communities and across history. At National Geographic, we know the power of exploration, wonder, and storytelling can change the world. And this Explorer Classroom YouTube show connects students from all over the world with our National Geographic Explorers. We've got a short lesson and time for your questions. Today, our Explorer is Nicolas Perez Consuegra. Nicholas is a scientist from Colombia who studies geosciences. This means that he learns about the earth and how it changes over time, as well as how the earth's changes affect people and wildlife. One of his favorite things to study is rivers, especially how they change and erode the land over time. Nicholas uses a variety of skills to study rivers, including math, observation, and collaboration with his teammates. Today, Nicolas is going to share all about changing landscapes and why it matters to all of us and all of our communities around the world. Before we get into today's lesson, let's welcome our viewers who have registered in advance. They are coming in from all over the globe. Hello to Aquinas Montessori, Nashwaxis Memorial, Hillard City School District, Vallejo Educational Academy, Village Elementary School, Dawa Homeschool, Gilmore Fine Arts, Alexandria Country Day School, Planet English School, Franklin Elementary, Kitson Central, Excel Academy, Charles W. C. Christ Elementary, St. Paul, Red Apple Elementary, New Hope Christian School, Maplewood Parent Cooperative, TDSB, The Fox Family, Conant Elementary School, Hoffman Boston Elementary, La Miranda Academy, Odea Core Knowledge Elementary, the Tan family, and all of our homeschool families out there. We're thrilled to have you here. And with that, it is time to get this Explorer Classroom started. We're going to hand it over to Nicolas to share all about changing landscapes. Take it away, Nicolas. Thank you, Jen. I'm really excited to, to be here today and to be able to share some of my knowledge with all of you in different uh, classrooms. Today, I will be talking about how I study changing landscapes around us and specifically how rivers can move. However, um, before we step into the science, let me tell you a little bit about the story of my life. I was born in Colombia, a country located in South America. You can see the location of Colombia as the red star in the map. The house where I grew up was in the mountains and surrounded by forest. And when I was little, I was very curious and I spent lots of time exploring the outdoors. Every day after coming from school, I would play with my cousin by climbing trees and running around exploring, picking up leaves, fruits and all sorts of insects. I also loved going on hikes with my family. Raise your hand if you like going on hikes or playing in the outdoors. Great. The landscapes of Colombia are covered by beautiful tropical forests. When I go hiking, I usually find amazing flowering plants and exotic animals. Something special about the mountains in Colombia is that it rains a lot in them. Have you ever gotten wet from playing in the rain? I have. Sometimes the rain can cause that the rivers rapidly grow and carry lots of water. After heavy rainstorms, rivers can become very angry and can be dangerous if you try to cross them. Angry rivers can carry lots of sand and mud and sometimes they can decide to move around. To explain you how rivers can move, I want to tell you a fascinating story that my grandfather Carlos told me when I was a kid many years ago. 
The story was about a river that used to flow next to a town in Colombia. It was an important town because lots of boats would navigate through the river. And the town became an important spot for the exchange of goods and for commerce, which brought wealth, so a lot of money, to the people living in it. People were very happy in this town. One day, however, something terrible happened. The river suddenly shifted its course, so it moved and abandoned the town, leaving it disconnected from the water. People were really worried. The lack of water caused that the ships that in the past were able to navigate through the town and bring goods and food were now unable to navigate because the water level was too low and they would get stuck in the muddy bottoms of the river. Eventually, this caused that the old navigation route was abandoned and a new route was created, bringing the growth of a new town which started benefiting from the business. The old town was left lonely and its people lost all their jobs and struggled to make money. I was left very curious and with many questions about the story that my grandfather had told me. How come that a river could move? And at the end, the rivers are not alive. That's impossible, I thought. But then I remembered that I had heard many times in the news about regions in Colombia and in other tropical areas that would be flooded during the rainy season. These floods devastated the communities living there. I wondered if there was any relationship between the floods and the, and the rivers. I knew I had to understand how the rivers moved and what caused the flooding in these areas and to answer the questions that my grandfather's story had generated in me. So I went to study a degree in earth sciences and I read a lot of books and papers, took a lot of science classes and I became a scientist. Now in my work, I have gone to many places around the world to study how rivers move through time. I get to go to explore remote areas of the world and to study the rivers in these regions. Do you have a favorite place that you visited in the past? I would love to know more about this place. My favorite field location, my favorite place that I have visited in the past are the forests of the Amazon in Colombia, full of immense waterfalls and crystalline rivers. Today, I want to show you some videos of these places and you will see that they are magical. They are spectacular crystalline waters. So let me play one of these videos to you. Try to listen to the sounds of water as the waterfall hits the rocks. This is a great location. Would you like to take a swim in this pond? Here is another video. Look at how the water is so, so clear in these rivers. I really love exploring. We may have been the first ones to visit this place. When I was doing field work, I realized that if I was standing next to a river, I could only see a small portion of the river. And that even if I waited for hours next to the river, looking at it, it was hard to see any changes. The river seemed to be staying still. Instead, I needed to have larger pictures of the rivers taken from above every month or so to see if the rivers were changing. So I found about satellites that are these machines that have been sent to space and rotate around the earth and they take pictures of the earth. 
every day or every week so we can have many pictures throughout the year and see how our river changes. So I started looking at many satellite images and found out that rivers actually move just like snakes. I'm going to show you now a series of photos from a river in the Amazon taken from space. Each picture represents one year and you will see that in each picture the river is moving a little bit. Try to focus a lot but you will see how the river moves. So, sometimes the river is rushed and cuts through a loop and sometimes it likes to go slower and swirl around. I was really fascinated when I first saw this video. I couldn't believe that rivers move. Doesn't it look like a snake? I think it does. I then started looking at the rivers in Colombia, near the town that my grandfather Carlos had described in his story. What I discovered was a complicated and dynamic network of rivers in this area. Many rivers have multiple connections and in some parts they split into two, joining again further downstream, something I did not expect. Here is an example of a river that had split into two. I want you to focus on where this two yellow arrows are and see how the river splits. In this image, you can see how the river started flowing through the floodplains that previously had no water. This happened because there was a lot of rainfall in the mountains and the river was carrying a lot of water and mud and broke the walls that was containing the river. The splitting of the rivers can cause many problems to people living in these floodplains as they are not expecting this extra amount of water and it can flood their fields and damage their houses. The most important thing that I have found through my research as a scientist is that rivers like to move and they have moved many times in the past. It is in their nature because in these lowland regions, they have space to move around and they need to move around to deal with the high amount of rain and sand and mud that is coming from the mountains. So as humans, we need to be aware that rivers like to move as snakes and that this might happen after heavy rains in the mountains upstream. If we are going to live near rivers, we need to remember that the movement of a river can cause great floods. We can use our knowledge in, in science and engineering to create solutions and prevent these floods. We need kids like you to study science and help the world. You can see in this example how this engineer has decided to build two barriers that are these yellow lines to protect the houses from river movement and future floods. In the end, my grandfather was right with his story. Rivers can move and the changes can be very sudden, causing floods in some areas and leaving other areas without water like the town in my grandfather's story. As a scientist and National Geographic explorer, I have had the opportunity to travel to some fantastic places around the world. If you want to become an explorer, I encourage you to be curious and ask many questions in class. Go outside and look at the nature around you, the trees, the animals, and rocks that surround you. Thank you for listening to my talk, and I would be happy to answer any questions. Well, I'm so glad you mentioned our local bodies of water. We're running out of time, friends, so I'm going to ask one final question that will hopefully help all of us become better explorers of our own local water. 
Nicholas, how can we join your mission? How can we help teach other people about the land and the water where we live? Okay, pay attention. I would say that you have to start by going out on walks to explore your local parks and the outdoors. Look at how water moves in these places. Think about how you can influence the water and the water can influence you. Most of all, keep asking questions about how things work. If you do this, you are well on your way to being a scientist and soon you will be changing the world. I think that sounds like a plan. You heard it here, friends. Start with a walk and end with being a scientist using your skills of observation and collaboration. Nicolas, thank you for such a wonderful show today. You've been outstanding. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to speak with all of you and all of the kids ask great questions. I am gonna use some of your questions in my research too. <gasps> friends, you're going to inspire his research. See, littles matter. Teachers, students, homeschool families, thank you for your time today. And I hope that you'll all consider joining many more of our events, including an upcoming show with Explore Ana Maria Benavides, who's going to tell us all about air plants. If you've never heard of an air plant, you're going to be wowed. You can register with a student group or for a shout out for your family on natgeoed.org backslash black. Ugh backslash Explorer Classroom. Have a great day, everyone. Stay curious.